friends, welcome back to the Sasser House. My name is Emily Ann, and we are gonna be in the kitchen today preserving up some of these peppers and tomatoes from our garden. Now, we have probably got four or five gallon freezer bags of frozen tomatoes in our freezer from the garden. These are some that have just been ripening up on the counter, and I definitely need to get to them or get them in the freezer. But I have heard about people, instead of preserving their salsa in cans and jars and processing it that way um, in a canner, they will freeze it. They'll make it and freeze it up and then you can just put it in the fridge and thaw it and folks say that it is delish. Another thing that I love about that idea is I don't have to follow any specific recipe for it to be shelf stable and canning safe. Um, I can make the salsa however I want to make it. So that's what we're going to do today with some of these peppers and tomatoes. We'll probably end up gifting some more of these peppers because our freezer is also filled with peppers from the garden. It has been a prolific pepper year in the garden. So first things first, I've got the oven preheated to 450 degrees and I think I want to roast up some of our ingredients just to help enhance the flavor and make it the best that it can be. If you hear something in the background, it's just my dishwasher. We've got that going, so uh, just ignore that if you can. But um, I have a recipe that I found online that is a copycat chili salsa. That is Chris's favorite salsa of all time, and so I thought it would be fun to try and recreate that at home. So it calls for canned tomatoes, but we're gonna use some of ours right out of the garden and um, I'm gonna roast it. So it's gonna be a little bit different than the recipe that I found, but I think it'll still turn out wonderful. So I'm gonna roast up some of the peppers and the tomatoes and the onion in this dish. So I'm just gonna roughly chop our onion because we're gonna end up putting all of this in the food processor. So we definitely don't have to be precise about it. For our peppers, I'm gonna be using four jalapeno peppers out of the garden. And I'm trying to decide if I want to leave the seeds in or not. We do like pretty hot salsa, but sometimes these homegrown jalapeno peppers can be quite hot. Sometimes when you read online about uh, making homemade salsa or doing anything with uh, peppers. Folks tell you to use gloves when handling the peppers, especially the seeds or this kind of veiny part on the inside because it can burn your hands. And I've read that before, but I've, ne I've always thought like, oh, okay, whatever. And I've never taken it serious. <laughs> but a couple weeks back, we canned up some of these homegrown peppers to make homemade uh, pickled jalapenos. I actually have them right here, the ones we jarred up together. They turned out so good and I can't wait to open them and enjoy them, but I did not use any gloves or anything to protect my hands and my hands burned so bad for two days. They burned like fire, it was awful. So I still don't have any cooking gloves, but I was trying to use that to avoid touching the peppers as much as I could. Now these tomatoes have just been sitting on the counter. I'm just gonna cut the tops off so that I can kind of get most of that kind of inside tough core out, just like that. And I will probably end up pulling most of the skins off of these. After they roast, I'll be able to pull them off very easily. Let me get a different knife. One of the knife sets that Chris and I got comes with a, it's like a tomato knife and it has like ridges on it that help you get into tomatoes when you're cutting them, which is nice because sometimes they can be tough to chop. So I'm just cutting off the tops of these and any spots on them that look like they've seen better days. And then I'm just dropping them in to our roasting pan. So I 
ended up adding all of the tomatoes that we had over there, a couple serrano peppers, we've got four jalapeno peppers, we have uh, two onions actually total in here, and Chris wanted to add two habanero peppers. We have some more uh, tomatoes that we harvested out of the garden, and I'm thinking that if we're going to do all this, actually, I just talked myself out of it. We're going to stick with just this. I was about to say, we're going to do all this, let's add more of those tomatoes in, but I know that I'll want to make more homemade pasta sauce and some other things with some of the tomatoes out of the garden, so maybe we'll put those in the freezer with the others, preserve those on another day, and go ahead and get these into the oven to roast. Man, it feels good to have one of our towels holding our produce taken care of. So now that we're waiting on the salsa to roast in the oven, I want to do something with our Anaheim green chili peppers. Those are these peppers right here. Um, we have a bunch of these in our freezer for later use. And then I've got some that Chris just harvested out of the garden, but these are some that we harvested a couple days ago. and. I've been looking up recipes and things to do with them, and I found a green chili sauce. Oh, I'm gonna grab my compost bowl, hold on. So I've been looking up things to do with them. I like incorporating them in, uh, you know, homemade queso, and um, I've put it in like ground beef if we're doing any type of, you know, tacos or quesadillas. I'll brown up my ground beef and I'll cut these up and add them to it. But uh, one thing that I love about them is they are not too spicy at all. And we use diced green chilies like that you get in a little jar, or not a jar, I guess a, a little can at the grocery store in a bunch of different recipes. Um, I throw them into chili when I'm making that. I throw them into a yummy chicken soup that we make all the time. Um, anytime I'm making homemade queso, so we use those quite often, and I've wondered, you know, if I should try to can these ourselves and do it that way, but I'll tell you, it has been a little bit overwhelming to process all of the stuff coming out of the garden this season. I've been on the road um, like crazy. Um, for those of you who don't know, if you're new to our channel, I'm a country music artist, and so summertime is my busiest time of the year, and Chris goes out on the road with me most times, so uh, that means that we get home to a bunch of produce, and I really don't like wasting food, and so uh, it's really kind of stretched me this season trying to come up with ways to preserve all of this. So when I saw this homemade green chili sauce, I thought that would be perfect. I could use up a bunch of the green chilies, and we could have this in the freezer because we love making enchiladas, and I thought that this would be perfect to go on that. Uh, the lady who shared the recipe, and I'll link it down below, uh, she uses her sauce for green chili french fries, which I don't even know what that is, but it sounds delish. Um, so I'll have a lot of fun getting creative with how we wanna use this. I bet you could add it into soups um, if you wanted to make like a white chicken chili. I bet that you could just throw in some of this green chili sauce. So what I'm gonna do is cut these up and I've cut the tops off of them and I feel like I probably need to seed these. So I'm just going through and cutting them right down the center so that here in a minute I can go through with a spoon and get all the seeds and the insides out of them. And then I was gonna maybe just throw them in my food processor. I'm trying to decide if I wanna do that or not. It would make the chopping process go by a lot quicker, but then I'd have to clean the food processor. But I think I might go ahead and just do it. Can let the dishwasher clean the food processor. We need one and a half cups for one recipe. I don't know if we'll have enough to double that. I have a feeling we might, but I'm gonna go ahead and get the seeds out of these first, and then we'll see where we're at. So I've been chopping up these green chilies, and we have got two cups right here of chopped green chilies. Oh, as I moved that, I saw that I missed the bowl on a few. So I'm gonna add those in there. 
I still have all of these left to cut up. So the recipe that I'm following calls for one to one and a half cups chopped green chilies. We have two cups right there. So I'm gonna see how many we have at the end of this, but I have a feeling we'll probably be at least doubling this recipe. I don't know if we'll be tripling it. Um, I guess if I did the one instead of one and a half, cause it just says one to one and a half. So if I'm doing the recipe based on one cup of chopped green chilies, then I could definitely triple it. Did I say quadruple a few minutes ago? I think I did, I meant triple. Um, so anyways, I'm just going through and cutting these up and we'll see how many we have to work with. This would go by a lot quicker with the food processor, but it's okay. We're about through, so it's not taking too terribly long. Okay, so we ended up getting, let's see, three and one third cups of these diced green chilies. So we definitely have enough to triple it. And Chris and I do like things to have a little bit of heat. We have a million of these little Serrano peppers. At least that's what I think they are. If these are something different, y'all tell me. But I think they're Serrano peppers. We got some Serrano peppers from the co-op and I didn't do a good job this year of labeling what was what that we planted. So like as our peppers started growing, I did not know what was what. Um, and these I've left on the plant for quite some time because I thought that they would get bigger and they never did. They're just itty bitty. I guess I could Google it, but I've been busy. So I wanna cut up since we have so many of these now, like I said, her recipe doesn't call for this. So if you just want to follow her recipe, I'll link it down below. But um, I'm going to cut these up because they have a little bit more spice than these green chilies. And I'm going to add those in as well. Since we've got them, we might as well use them. And this will add a little bit more heat to our green chili sauce. Let's see. My knives need to be sharpened so bad. I'm going to go through here and scrape out all of these insides with a spoon. I didn't take all the insides out completely, but just the majority of them to get rid of some of those seeds and some of the really, really hot stuff. So I'm gonna go through and cut these halves in half, and then we'll do a rough little dice, and then we'll get to move on to the rest of our recipe. our tomatoes and onions and peppers have roasted long enough. That smells so good. I could honestly let them go probably a little bit longer, but we're in a slight time crunch and I want to be able to get this salsa done before we leave the house. Yeah, so those skins are going to peel off perfectly, but it's burning hot right now. So We'll let this sit for a minute and we will look at that once we get done with our green chili sauce. All right, so in a medium sized pot, I'm gonna turn that just on medium. We need three tablespoons of butter since we're tripling this recipe. I'm gonna get that into our pot and let that start melting. And then we need to dice up an onion. I didn't realize the recipe called for last onion. So we're going to get that done real quick. Okay. So I didn't think this through since we are tripling the recipe. Uh, a single batch calls for two thirds of a cup of chopped onion. So that means that we would need to do two cups of chopped onion. I don't know if we need that much onion in our sauce. I think that Chris would probably like it with less onion. So 
I'm just gonna dice up one, whoop, well, we lost the pepper. I'm just gonna dice up one whole onion. We'll come over here and get it added in with our butter. And we just want that to get nice and translucent and soft. All right, so now that our onions are nice and soft, we need to add six tablespoons of flour to our butter mixture. So we're gonna stir this up and this is going to make a roux for our sauce. So we're gonna let that cook and absorb all that butter and cook in with those onions and cook out that raw flour for just a minute or two. Now to our flour and butter and onions, we're gonna slowly start adding in chicken broth. I'm gonna turn up the heat slightly. And since we are tripling this, it calls for one and a half cups total. So we'll do that three times. So that was just one and a half cups right there. We'll measure out a little bit more. time. I'll let that thicken up before I add the last of the chicken broth. Then for seasonings, it says a dash of salt. So I'm just going to do about that much. And then a dash of cumin just to taste. We like cumin, so, and I'm tripling the recipe. So that should be enough. And now we just need to add in all of our green chilies. So I'm gonna turn the heat up and it says to let this simmer for 10 to 15 minutes. So we're gonna let it do that and cook down a little bit and soften up those green chilies and we will have homemade green chili sauce for whatever we want. And I almost forgot, this calls for minced garlic as well. So I'm just gonna do a good spoonful of that and stir that in. Let that cook down with everything else. So as you can see, even after all that, we still have a lot of peppers to process, especially these habaneros. And Chris just harvested a ton of more habaneros. These go a long way. Just one habanero pepper can heat up a whole dish. So I have some of my band members who love hot peppers. So I'm gonna bag up some of these peppers for them. Because like I said, we have a freezer full of peppers and even more out in the garden left to harvest. So I'm gonna do just a little smorgasbord of peppers for them to enjoy. And I'm actually headed out on the road tomorrow, so this will be a really great little treat for me to give them. The rest of these I will freeze up in our freezer, and all of these cayennes that we have, we'll probably put on another string and get those drying up with the other ones that we did. Um, a couple weeks back. If you missed that video, I'll link it above. That's going to be our way to preserve up all of these cayenne peppers. We're going to turn it into uh, homemade red pepper flakes. So I have my sous chef right here. He is pulling all of the peels off of these tomatoes. Since we roasted them, the peels come off so easily. So thankful for his help. And as soon as he gets done with that, we will get them in our blender. Okay, I'd say our salsa recipe is definitely at least doubled. 
So what we're going to do is go ahead and add our other ingredients while Chris is finishing up. So one teaspoon is one clove, so we need two teaspoons. And I'll link this recipe down below. And then we need four teaspoons of lime juice. I'll add a little extra because that just gives it a freshness that's so good. Okay, so we have our garlic clove, our lime juice. I'm going to add in some of our seasonings now. So we need one and a half teaspoons of salt, but we're doubling. So there's a half. One and a half. Half. One and a half. So we double that. And then we need one teaspoon total of sugar. We're doing two teaspoons total of cumin, and this is just a half a teaspoon, so we'll need four of these. And then lastly, we need two teaspoons of dried cilantro. So all we have left to do now is carefully get these tomatoes and onions and peppers into our blender and blend it all up. Okay, so we're gonna have to do this in batches because it made so much. The consistency of that is perfect. We don't really like a chunky salsa. All right, so we've just got a little bit more left to blend up and then we'll stir it all together to make sure everything's evenly incorporated. That smells so good. Okay, so as you can see, that made a massive batch of homemade salsa. And we really need to taste it to make sure it doesn't need any more salt or anything like that. I'm trying to see how much. It made us two and a half liters of salsa. Let me grab a chip real quick. Now it is warm right now, so that's something that I'm not used to in a salsa. But I'll still be able to taste the flavor, I think. That has got a kick. That is spicy, but it's good. It is so good. That has got a heat to it, um, but it's really, really yummy. I absolutely love the flavor. It tastes so fresh. So we are kind of in a rush. We are going to friend's house this evening. I'm going to get this into our containers and um, then we're going to put this in the fridge and let it come to like cool off before we put it into the freezer. For our green chili sauce, I'm actually going to take my immersion blender down here. I think that we'll enjoy it better if there's not as many chunks of diced green chilies in there. So I'm going to do that real quick and we will do the same thing with that one, get it into our containers and we'll just put these all in the fridge for now. And then when they cool down, when we get home from our friend's house, <laughs> there we go. I will put it uh, into the freezer. So we just got home from our friend's house and I packaged up our green chili sauce 
And this thickened up pretty good, so it's going to be the perfect consistency for enchiladas or anything like that. I also thought that this would be really yummy if I did um, like diced up potatoes and roasted potatoes and almost like a breakfasty hash with like a runny egg on top and bacon and cheese and a little bit of this green chili sauce. I think that would be delish. So there will definitely be other ways that we use this and I can't wait to get to cook with it. And I'm really excited to get to experiment with freezing things instead of canning them. It is such a simpler process and it kind of takes the pressure off. The only downside is this stuff probably won't last as long in the freezer as our canned goods will on the shelf. Um, but if I am aware of what I've got in the freezer, then I'll know to use it up. So I would love to hear if you prefer canning for preserving or freezing, or if you do a little bit of both, and some of your favorite freezer recipes, because I really think that I wanna get into preserving some of our food this way, because it just seems a whole lot simpler. We want to thank y'all so much for spending some of your time out of your day with us here in our home. It means the world to us that you would support us here and um, grow and learn with us here. And we just love y'all. So thank you for being here. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And we will see you guys on the next one. Bye y'all.